Hi there, this is Gist Nigeria. Coming up on the program. Gender discrimination. We explore how prominent Nigerian cultures deny women right to inheritance. Multi-tongued. The polyglots speak in six languages, some acquired from watching movies and Against all odds, lady with disability defies stereotypes, shares a love story. Plus, my name is Sada Sedekunle, check me out. Nigerian entrepreneur and robotics engineer creates world first intelligent gaming robot. Welcome to Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels Television, where we bring you stories making the rounds on social media. I'm Ajoke Hulotse. Let's start with our top story this week. In many parts of Nigeria, women are still denied the rights they inherit from their parents, despite Nigeria's pluralist legal system concerning inheritance and secession. Indigenous customary laws remain largely discriminatory. Recently. The Supreme Court ruled against Igbo's customary law denying female descendants the right to inherit their parents' property. But has this changed anything? I spoke to women from Nigeria's three prominent ethnic groups. Here's what I found out. Africa is a potpourri of cultures, customs and traditions. But as beautiful as some of the continent's ways of life are, many are deeply rooted in discrimination and inequality against women. In parts of Nigeria, as with some countries of the world, women are viewed as second-class citizens. Age-long traditions favor men over women, and gender equality seems a mirage. Families pass on wealth from one generation to another. Children inherit landed property and money, but there are still Nigerian cultures that deny women access to a fair share of family inheritance. As a woman, I am concerned about customary practices that stop me and several other females from inheriting property belonging to one's father or husband. Why should I be excluded from a succession plan merely because of my gender? Nigeria's Southeast is known for prioritizing male children over the female ones. Regardless of age, the boy child remains the preferred breed. Linda Namani is from Enugu State. A family comprises of six girls and a boy. Following her father's death in 2010, his will prioritized the youngest son over all of the six older daughters. My only brother, Sam, was given 50%. Then myself and my sisters, four of us, were given 5.55% five, five, five each. Then my two stepsisters, they were given 15% each. So that's how he shared it. He was given 50% because he's a boy. You know, in Igbo land, <laughs> they value boys a lot. My elder sister wasn't happy with the share because she felt that being the eldest, of course, she have the bigger share and all that, but my youngest brother, being the only boy, had the biggest share, so she wasn't happy. It created a lot of bad blood. Practices that diminish the economic security and independence of women are backed by traditional institutions. In the Southeast, there's been little or no reason to change them. For a daughter to come and share the inheritance, or my inheritance with the uh, man, she the most person. Hmm? Even any Igbo practicing it is no more a traditional ruler. Yeah? You can give your daughter anything that will make her happy throughout her own life. Hmm? Out of your inheritance. But once she dies, then you go back to the original ruler. <laughs> But these views are not peculiar to the Southeast. Communities in North Central Nigeria are also filled with stories of the denial of women's right to inheritance. Selin Long John is a Christian from the Biram ethnic group in Joss Play 2 State. A long standing tradition left her and four of her female siblings without any inheritance after the death of their father. When my dad passed on, he had some landed properties, had some houses, some plots of land and some cars. Now presently, my male siblings are the ones uh, managing the properties. But for us, the female, we don't have a seal, we're staking it. Tradition is man-made. And, and so I feel that in every tradition, there should be equality. 
This lack of equality is evident in other parts of northern Nigeria, which is predominantly Muslim. Cultures in most areas in the region are a reflection of religion, and women are usually under the short end of the stick. Wahida Bashir is a Muslim from Gombe State. Islamic laws allotted her only a fraction of what her brothers inherited following their father's death. When it was uh, time for sharing our own uh, inheritance, it was um, my male siblings that took more of it because that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared it. The narrative is slightly different in Nigeria's southwest. Here, women are entitled to an equal share of inheritance as men. Lady Abbas inherited equal property as her brothers. Today, she's able to take care of her late brother's children. We share this according to the wife's charge. And um, by that, my own side we have our own. My other uh, stepsisters and brothers, we had their own. And uh, there was nothing like, okay, well, I have a male child, or I have the man, or you are a female, you are a girl, you are married. In 2014, the Supreme Court of Nigeria ruled that any custom that denies women, particularly widows, their inheritance, is in conflict with natural justice, equity, and good conscience. In 2020, the Apex Court again upheld the right of a female child to inherit properties of her father, voiding decades of discrimination against women. But these rulings have done little or nothing to stop age-long customs and tradition from disinheriting women. Okay, since the Supreme Court's order that empowers a girl child to inherit from their uh, family estate, their, her father's estate, I, I wouldn't say that there is a drop in the cases of disinheritance of girl child. In fact, I can say that there is even more upside because we are getting more number of cases of girls and widows and other women that have only girl children coming to report cases of uh, this inheritance in our office, and they are coming in through. The Igwe in a state or in a local government can say this is how it will be. Not the Supreme Court. Because it's a tradition of the people. Uh -huh. uh, the, the Supreme Court would have come down and asked the, the Igwe, the uh, Anambra State Council of uh, Igwe's, this is our problem. What do you say? Then we discuss it and pass it as a traditional law, not to court to <laughs> court case or court law. No, we cannot agree to that. As fair and equitable justice continues to lock horns with traditional and cultural practices, hopes of implementing court orders that guarantee women's right to inherit equally as men seem bleak. But are there ways to force a cultural revolution? As women, we should try as much as possible to position ourselves. Economically, we should be stand. Socially, we should be found there. And in terms of intelligence, that we'll be able to assert ourselves and prove our point with uh, brilliance, I think it's very, very important. There is no law now whatsoever that in Nigeria that you know speaks on particularly inheritance of property. So I believe the National Assembly can also enact a law that will empower women to inherit. That is riding on the Supreme Court judgment now to enact a law that will be, you know, um, a working instrument. And uh, with that done, I'm not sure that it will override, naturally override any other cultural uh, you know, practices. The need for potent legislation that protects the rights of women to family inheritance has become imperative. Over the years, the girl child has shown equal strength, resilience and contributed meaningfully to the growth of society like her male counterparts. Therefore, whatever is given to her by right is an investment in the future of Nigeria and can never be lost. Well, there's still a distance to cover to achieve gender equality in Nigeria.